Welcome to tonight's Devo. Um, glad you're with us. Uh, don't forget, after this, we will be meeting uh, on Zoom. We'll have a little hangout session at 7.30. Uh, so make sure after you watch this, you know, jump on our Zoom call. The link will be in the email. And it's just a good time to hang out and to have a time of prayer. And this is the way we're going to proceed from now on, right? So every Wednesday, we're going to release a Devo. And then after the Devo, we'll have time to hang out. And just to more opportunity for us to connect. And uh, so I hope that you join us on Wednesday nights. Um, so I want to continue the theme of last week a little bit. Um, about the wilderness, right? That in this period of time is when Israel has escaped Egypt and they are now wandering in the wilderness uh, for 40 years until they reach the promised land, right? And on the one hand, as I said last week, the wilderness is God's classroom, right? So it is where they are learning to trust in God. It is where they're learning to, to rely on him completely for everything, right? For food, for water, for, for their survival. They're relying on God. But also, this time in the wilderness is more than just that. It's more, right? They are learning to worship him. This is a time where they are learning to worship God in the way he wants to be worshipped. And, uh, and so that's what I want to talk about today. Right, is that what does it mean to worship in the wilderness? How do we worship God, especially during this time? And understand, I'm equating the wilderness to our stay at home or our time being in this kind of trial, this kind of struggle in a sense. And how do we get through this in a way that we grow and we mature in our faith? And one of those points of growth and maturity that I see. Uh, potential for during this time is growth in our worship, which you would think is weird because you're probably thinking, well, Josh, I don't have the, the worship team. I don't have the, the lights, the, the sounds. I don't have all these things. Um, and, and so how am I going to be able to worship in that sense, right? So I, I hope that maybe you starting to realize or understand during this time uh, at least I've seen it in my own life, maybe to some extent in your life, but that it's harder, isn't it? Right? It's harder um, to get into a mode of worship. It's harder to approach the altar and to pray, right? Um, it's um, perhaps you're worshiping a little less. Maybe you're praying a little less than you would have. And perhaps this is pulling back the curtain a little bit and showing us how reliant we are on the Sunday service or the Wednesday night service or whatever. And we rely on those times specifically to, to worship, to pray. And without those, right, we, we perhaps hardly pray. We hardly worship God at all. And perhaps during this time, you haven't really had much time in actual worship and actual praise and actual communing with God, um, sadly. And that's, that's what I want to address today. That's what I want to talk about. Um, and so what I want to challenge us is that this is just as great a time, if not better of a time, to learn to mature and to grow in our worship, right? To understand that what it means to come to God, to commune with Him, when everything else is stripped away, right? When it's just us and Him, how do we do this? Um, and why is this time such an important opportunity for us to grow in this regard? So when Israel... Right when they go into the wilderness, right, they aren't just wandering, and they aren't just complaining. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm bored. Um, though they did do that, like I explained last week, but they have a great task ahead of them. Right when you read Exodus, right through Deuteronomy, during these these books, they have a huge task, and that is learning to worship God. That is learning to to come before Him in an appropriate way. And in the book of Exodus, at least, we see that one of the focuses is, is building the tabernacle, right? And so this is, I think, a, a big focus of their time in the wilderness is they're learning to, to worship God 
And this is a hard task because we're learning to worship God in incredibly difficult circumstances. All right? When you read Exodus, Moses goes um, before Pharaoh and says, right, let our people go so that we may go into the wilderness and worship, right? So we go in the wilderness, we're going to have a feast and we're going to sacrifice to our God. And when Pharaoh releases them after the plagues and says, go worship your God, whatever, right? So even the beginning, when Moses is asking to leave Egypt, the idea is, that they would go to the wilderness and they would worship. In part, this is a good excuse, right, to get out of Egypt. Um, but more than that, uh, it's really true. They go into the wilderness and the first thing they do, right, when, when they escape the Egyptians, Moses and Miriam sing a song, right? Um, and it's, they say, sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver, he has hurled into the sea, right? Our God is the deliverer. Our God has saved us from captivity. And, and so they sing a song, right? They begin to praise and they begin to worship God. Um, but it's more than that. When you read the rest of Exodus, like I said, a lot of it has to do uh, with the building of the tabernacle. A lot of it has to do with instituting altars and priests. And then you get to Leviticus. And then in the first half, portion of Leviticus, they're talking about how to sacrifice, how to properly worship and come before God. And so you see several, you know, the large portion of this time in the wilderness is dedicated to them learning to come before God's presence, how vital it is for God's presence to be with them, right? Um, the importance of the tabernacle, the importance of sacrifices, the importance of all these things God is requiring of them. Uh, for their relationship with him, right? They're, they're learning to worship God. And you have to remember that they're learning to do this in the wilderness. So they don't have the resources. They don't have much food, right? So you can imagine that if you're already desperate, you're already in need, and then God asks you to begin to sacrifice, you know, your food, to sacrifice a calf, to sacrifice a sheep, to whatever, and, and you're already in a desperate situation. I mean, can you imagine what that does to you? Can you imagine uh, what, that, what that says about the importance of, of worship in this time, right? Being Having to put together all these uh, buildings and altar stuff uh, with their belongings, um, and, and, and during a time when they're just trying to survive. Right. So when you're reading this, you know, you, you might ask, right, why do you think, uh, why would God have them do all of this in the wilderness? Right. Why, why would God request them to begin to build this altar, to begin to build this tabernacle, to institute sacrifices and feasts and Sabbaths and all these things? In a time of desperation, in a time of difficult circumstance, right? Couldn't God have just waited until they were in the promised land? Like, couldn't he just brought them there quickly, settle them in the land, and then they can build a temple, then they can, you know, have enough resources to give their offerings? Uh, why would God make them learn this during this time? Right, during the tough circumstance of the wilderness. Um, on one hand, he sees them something very vital, and that is God's presence is more important than anything. Right? That, that their worship of him is more important than anything. Right? The promised land is important, right? But it's not their priority. God is, right? God is their priority, right? Having a stable home, a land to cultivate, you know, safety, those are important things, but they aren't the priority, right? God is their priority. Um, and how does God, how do they learn to, that God is their priority is through worship, right? Remember that I said that God is, reforming their desires, the things that they want. Uh, and one of those ways he teaches them this is, is not just to rely on him, 
but it's to give him what they have in a much greater extent of trust. Uh, and that's what worship does, right? It is reforming their desires, uh, not just for the promised land, not just for food, but for God's presence, right? To be with him and to understand how vital and important that is, um, right? You learn how important of a priority your relationship with God is when during this time there is such a focus, they're so uh, immersed in sacrifices, in their altars, in their feasts, in their worship, in their practices. Um, they, they're tying right God's word to their arms and their foreheads. It is They are immersed in it, right? And so they're surrounded by daily signs and activities that remind them that God is their priority, that God is what matters. Uh, and the sad thing is that without, for instance, right now, without being able to go to the church for the church not to carry that weight for us, uh, and it's up to us, maybe we find out, sadly, what our priorities really are. And that, that perhaps worshiping God isn't one of them when we take a serious look at our lives right now. Um, and so on one hand, part of this is learning to find out, is God the priority in our lives? And if he is, how do our actions and how do our worship reflect this, right? During this time, especially. Um, and so by going into the wilderness during this time, we can learn, right, to worship God in a new way, in a way that isn't focused on the, the, the different uh, music and the, you know, the show of it, but very simply the importance of your relationship with God, worshiping Him um, authentically. Um, so why else would this circumstance, why should they worship in this circumstance? One is so that they may, another way is that so they may learn that um, our circumstances do not determine our ability to worship, right? If Paul and Silas can worship God in a prison, right, we can sing praises in our bedrooms, right? If Moses and Miriam can sing praise to God while they're being chased by the Egyptians, we can sing praises to God in our trials, right? If the people of God, if the people of Israel can worship God in the wilderness to such a great extent, what is stopping us from worshiping God in our moment, right? What is stopping us and hindering us from worshiping God now? Um, and we can't allow our circumstances, especially this one, to become an excuse for us to not commune with God, for us to not um, worship Him or pray to Him or come to the altar. It is just as vital now uh, than when we're at church or even when we go back to church, right? Now, this is the time to worship. Um, and it's in times like these that we really learn what worship is about. That it's not how we worship, and it's not necessarily where we worship. Um, it's about whom we worship that we are learning, right? That we are learning it's it's about God, right? It's not about the circumstance we're in, and it's not about uh, whether or not we have music or not. Um, but it's about who we are worshiping, uh, and so that's you know that's my encouragement to you today. Um, don't let this time hinder you from worshiping God. Rather, see this as an opportunity um, to learn to truly worship Him, right? Like the kind of worshiper God seeks is one who worships in spirit and in truth, um, right? That in this time, we can learn um, to hear His voice in that silence, to commune in Him, feel His presence without the loud music, right? Uh, that when everything is stripped away and it's just you and God, um, the kind of beautiful kind of worship that can happen in those moments. Um, so my, that's my encouragement to you, that you would seek God during this time because He is worthy of it, because He is our priority, because He is what matters. Uh, and so... That is why we worship him. So that's my encouragement. I, I hope that you find the time in your day, whatever that may look like, 
whether you play music, whether you don't play music, whether you write a song, whether you sing a song you know, uh, but that you would make the time uh, in your schedule, in your day, um, to pray, to worship, to, to value and prioritize um, your spiritual life and your life with God, understanding that that is what is important um, during this time, um, and that that is what can help us during our circumstances. Um, so I love you guys. Hope to see you at the Zoom meeting, but I pray God goes with you, and I pray that um, you are encouraged uh, by today's word. So we love you guys. I wanna make